Today's video is going to be about support. Supporting your own, supporting your friends and family who has clothing lines, businesses, things of that nature. Shoot, man, I'm just going to come up here just to advertise a few things that I bought recently to support the black community for you guys to check out and buy your own. DJ, DJ, DJ Eric, 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 about support supporting people around you so they can continue to grow and it's nothing better than supporting your own people that you know are on that grind and working so i'm going to advertise a few people that i know directly that i bought things from that i'm very very happy about advertising today on a youtube channel dj j erica i am dj j erica now first things first is this shirt that i'm wearing right now it's from the homie rlh real life hustle the brand this is a nice t-shirt booked it's representing everything that is hollywood baby so when you say that you're booked that means you're booked and busy you know what i'm saying so i had got this recently had took a couple of pictures on you probably see me on instagram like stuff like that but you guys should definitely check them out and support them and go to their website reallifehustle.com i'll put the links to the bottom and make sure the url is right listen brother if you said it wrong hey well no <laughs> but the links will be in the bio for you guys to support that check it out that's one of the people that i'm going to advertise on here today the second thing i want to highlight is the book by manika and pickett it's called pretty boy blue this is a really really good book and it talks about a young lady's life going into adulting learning about herself learning about her sexuality entering the army it's just so much different things that goes on in this woman's life so much dramatic things going on and it's a really really good read honestly i read it so damn fast i didn't think i was going to read it this fast because usually i take my time with books but this book had me wrapped into it i finished it within a few days you guys should definitely check it out buy the book let me try to get that up close to y'all i'm gonna definitely put the link in the bio so that's the other person you should definitely support because i definitely support them and what they're doing and she got an audio version of it coming out very soon for next year 2019 so you know i'm gonna try to get her on my show so we can talk about that too but that's the other person you support now coming up next we got another interview we got another interview on the way with ebony she's an r&b singer all the way from los angeles check out our full interview on my youtube channel it's dj j erica the takeover mix show baby and i'll be right back it's me, the one and only DJ Jerrica, 95.5 FM. And when I say we have a special, special guest in the building, her name is Ebony. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. For everybody that don't know, she's an R&B soul artist, brand new on the scene. She got a brand new single called Lipstick. I absolutely love this single. And I want you to go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience. Tell them about yourself, where you reside, and how did you start up in the music business? For sure. So my name's Ebonique. I am from Chicago, Illinois. I've been singing my whole life, but came out to LA and I live out here now um, about five years and just been pursuing music as a solo career. Um, really just it's been about networking, um, just meeting the right people, meeting different producers, been working on music with a lot of different people, trying to find the right the right sound, the right fit, and um, yeah, it's been it's been an adventure. And uh, lately, hooked up with um, Dwayne DeRock, who's been helping me with getting my song out there. And um, I'm working on a new single right now with him, um, featuring Jadakiss. So it's just been um it's been a hustle and uh, lots of ups and downs, but it's been um, exciting. So that's, my, that's, that's my fantastic. Brief. Now, how long have you been <laughs> in LA? I've been here for five years. I moved out here five years ago from Chicago. Okay, so what is the music scene difference here between Chicago and L.A.? I'd say that the the history of music in both places is definitely different. Like, Chicago has a big background of, like, jazz, blues, and um, a lot of, like, venues for that kind of music. But there's not as much for, like, you know, pop, R&B. You know, there is a little bit, but it's not as many opportunities as there are out here in LA. Um, there's way, way, way more for like many different types of genres of music in, in Los Angeles than there are in Chicago. Um, I was working with some producers out there and, you know, getting in the studio and met with a couple of um, record labels, but, you know, there's not as much space for people that are on the, the up and coming kind of um, route. You know, it's more like once you're established, you can do more in Chicago. Okay, cool. So, like, would you say, like, the, the people in L.A. is more welcoming when it comes to uh, new new artists, brand new artists, they're more uh, supportive, would you say that? Um, I would definitely say that, um, yeah, there's more, there's more support for developing artists 
in Los Angeles, just in terms of like at least venues, people coming out to support your music. I definitely had a couple of shows in Chicago and, you know, people came out, but I'd say that the environment is just more catering towards that in Los Angeles than it is in Chicago. And where have you performed so far in L.A.? Like your favorite places or spots to just uh, network or perform, hang out? Um, I've performed at a lot of different places, just some of them. Um, I performed at recently the Peppermint Club, um, the Sayers Club. Um, I'm going, I've am going. i been at the Hotel Cafe before, and I've got a performance coming up on the 28th there again. Um, back before the House of Blues closed down, I performed in the Voodoo Lounge there, um, the one that was on Sunset. Um, and, yeah, like a whole bunch of different, like I'm at, I've done so many different, like, open mic kind of, like, circuits kind of like that where you, you sign up in advance and you kind of go out there um, and perform. But, yeah, I mean, I've done I've done a lot of places. And, like, when you put together the show, of course, like, this live in concert, we always ask the artists, okay, who inspired your tracks or your music? But, like, the show is a, is a big old art scene in, in itself. Like, what can, a, what can a fan expect when they come to see Edmonique live in concert? Sure. So I would say that when you come out to see me live in concert, you can expect to hear my voice definitely sounds like it does on the song. So you're not going to come to my show and be like, dang, that don't sound nothing like, but it's going to be more organic and free-flowing and, you know, live music with, like, sometimes I'm able to have a live band, sometimes I don't. But definitely when you've got a live band feel, it's a whole different ball game than when you're listening to a track. Um, you know, it's more alive, it's got more energy, and, you know, I'm not doing moves like Beyonce or anything, but, you know, it's definitely different to, you know, experience somebody live in person, their personality um, on stage, for sure. But, you know, eventually you might have some dancers, but, you know, at this point it's just me, me and the band in the audience, or just me and the audience. You know what, I agree with that. Sometimes less is more, and, like, I really enjoy your voice and what you present, especially with the soul and R&B genre, you know, it's starting to get out there more, and it's starting to be p- more people receptive to that. Does it make you feel good that, 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 that I guess, people are becoming more receptive to the R&B soul now um, after kind of like a drought for the past 10 years or so? Yeah, I definitely. That's been my favorite genre to sing is the R&B soul. I love music all across the board, and I listen to and I've sang and dabbled in lots of different types of genres, but more of my heart lies is in the R&B soul when I sing and when I express myself. And I'm definitely excited to see a lot of artists coming out right now with more music in that genre and just having more of that that vibe and that love and that, like, that soul come back uh, to music because it's been kind of, you know, I love R&B or I love uh, hip-hop, but, like, it kind of, you know, it's gone towards a way where, like, there's not as much substance as there used to be in hip-hop either. So I feel like the soul and is bringing back more of the substance that we don't have as much on the radio right now. And speaking of substance and thinking about artists of substance, I want to know who inspired you as a vocalist, as an artist overall growing up, and what was the artist that made you say, okay, I think this is something that I want to do because I see them doing it? I was very inspired in a personal way, like as in seeing other female artists, because I, I love, I'm inspired by Stevie Wonder, Prince, Um, But I would say for people where I'm like, okay, I could see myself being something like this person um, would be people like Aaliyah, um, Mariah Carey. I looked up to both of those um, women very much when I was younger. Janet Jackson, um, TLC, like I really admired their style um, and their like personalities and their swag kind of when they when they were performing. So those are people that I looked up to a lot just as a younger um, kid growing up singing knowing that I wanted to be a singer even when I was little. Um, that was my inspiration. And that's an excellent list. Like, the people that you just went down is literally my top, fly, my top five, like, when it comes to female and artists, especially TLC, like, my favorite girl group ever. Um, mm-hmm. What I want to know is if you had the opportunity to pick an artist that's, that's a legend to be able to work with or just get advice from, who would you pick to get advice from? Just You could only pick one. That that would be tough because there's so many. Like right now, I was I was asked that question by well one of my mentors, Dwayne, and I had mentioned um, Diana Ross, which is more you know that's closer to the 80s, 70s, 80s, um, 
but I admire her just because of the way that she she killed the game for like an you know she's a she's an icon and a legend, but she she did it, did it in a classy way and was never was never, you know, unclassy, never seen as, you know, being disrespectful or rude or, you know, having any issues with other people in her in her business. And I I admire people like that who are just able to do it and make it look so effortless and graceful and kind. And she did a lot of, you know, charitable things besides that too. So that's somebody that I would want to model myself after um, in terms of just somebody that I look up to the way that they did it. Um, in the music business. Yes, especially, you know, just the Motown era in general, you know, it's one of my favorite mm-hmm. eras. And, um, yes, I, just, I it's, love that. It's just so many classics, so many classic groups, so many classic uh, solo artists, and, you know, she's one of, like I said, one of my favorites, one of my mother's favorites is Diana Ross. So it's really cool that you're picking a selection that I can relate to in regards to that. Um, my next question for you, and, and just in general, Okay, what it what inspires you as an artist when you are you a songwriter or do you also play instruments? Like, what inspires you as an artist overall, and what exactly do you do when you are creating? I I also am a songwriter. I am inspired by a lot of different things. Just even just listening to music. Um, sometimes I I like to listen to the beat and then I write to the beat. That's usually often how it is. Um, I like to come up with a melody before I even write the words to. I'm very like melodically driven as um as an artist. Um, but yeah, I mean it could be anything. It could be situations. Sometimes I'm just like it would be nice to write about like, you know, something that's not so cliche and just write about like how I feel right now or like what I'm thinking about right now. Sometimes like having a conversation with friends about like fashion and like, you know, what we what we think is cool or like how we like to have stuff that's different or like you know off the beaten path and just write a song about that feeling um so i'm inspired by literally anything it's just whatever i'm feeling at the moment or sometimes just melodies um somebody that i really admire in terms of like always having amazing melodies stevie wonder um in his in his songs even for himself and for others because he wrote for a lot of other people besides himself too so He's somebody that I'm always admiring um, in terms of his musicality um, for his whole career, really. But, yeah. Yeah, and uh, um, Stevie Wonder, when it comes to his songwriting, um, I really enjoyed uh, the song with Michael Jackson. Uh, he wrote, I think it's called uh, I Can't Help It. That's, like, one of my favorite songs. Yeah. Um, I love that that song written by Stevie Wonder. He's just so... I guess he's he really really great at when he comes to songwriting. He's really able to absorb the other artists, and it's like, how could you mm-hmm. just be so great as your own artist, but then also be able to take other people's energy, and you know, be able to produce something that really mirrors them as a person. Like it's just like it's just amazing to me when we have uh, artists like himself be able to do that because it's hard. Sometimes you're just a songwriter. Sometimes you have to, and then sometimes you are not a songwriter, but you're a performer. And then, But he does everything. So that's just, that's big up to Stevie Wonder. Classic. Definitely classic. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, I wanted to know about your single, because of course you came on here to pro- uh, promote your material. Um, mm-hmm. Lipstick, okay. I love this single. It's very melodic. It's very chill. It's very sultry. Uh, I want to know the full process behind the single, uh, the the writing and production. Tell me about the entire story of how you guys put that single together. So Lipstick, um, which is the, my latest single released um, in September, I found that beat actually just online. A lot of the times, you know, if I'm not working with the producer at the moment, um, sometimes I'll just look online and, like, look at people, producers that just put their music up to to buy, to, to purchase. So I bought the beat online. Um, I wrote the song with uh, Matt Cash. He is a, he's a producer, an engineer, a writer, um, and he co-wrote the song with me. Um, and we just kind of, like, brainstormed on the melodies and ideas and, you know, bridge and just kind of come up, came up with it um, one day and um, recorded it. And it's usually, like, the best songs, they kind of come together easily, and it's, like, not a strained and stressful process. It's just kind of something that kind of flows out, and that's kind of that's how the song went for us. We just It was just all very easy. It came out 
and um, and then that was that. Um, the song was produced by the boy. His name is the boy, um, and. I forget where he lives. He, he's not in L.A. He's, you know, I bought it online, so I think he's in, I can't remember if it's Canada or he's just, he's out of state where he really lives. And so I've never met him in person. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of, that's the, the modern day era of how songs get produced nowadays. It's like you can buy a beat online and create it on your own somewhere else across the world and and get it done. That's fantastic. Now, how amazing is technology? You know, like you're able right. to just get your music out to massive people just by a click of a button or being able to uh, collaborate with new producers that's not exactly in the same room, but they have the same vibe that you have, and you're able to just go on mm-hmm. and say, okay, I like this. Maybe we can work virtually. That's dope. That's really, really dope. Uh, I also want to give a compliment on the video. Love the production of the video. Who was the, the everyone that worked behind the scenes to help to put that video together? So, so it's a funny story. It's produced by the company The Flage, but Matt Cash, the person that also wrote it, also directed and shot the video. Um, he and I came up with the concept of what it would be, like, you know, what the plot line would be for the video. Um, and then he shot it along with um, Terrestrial, which is another um, production company. Um, so we had some people from his company help as well, but it was shot and produced mostly with just to other people in the room. Um, you know, we had a couple of people come in and help, you know, a few times, but it was very small, small project, um, just with a couple of people in the room, and we, we got it done in, in, what was it, 12 hours? It was a 12-hour shoot. Um, we were shooting from, like, the afternoon all the way until the morning, um, and we got it done, and it was it was a fun process. That's dope, that's dope. And before we go into it, I just want to ask some more questions. How can people support you? Do you have any new projects coming out for people to download? Is that out as well? Or are we just going to get the single for now and then you have another EP project coming out after this? I have, well, how people can support me is definitely to go and listen to the track, stream it. Um, it's available for purchase on iTunes, Tidal, most most and all streaming platforms. So that's a way to support me is to just listen to the music, to show your love and show your support. Um, I, In terms of what projects I have coming out next, um, I have that single that I'm working on right now um, with Dwayne DeRock. He produced it, and um, hopefully that will be coming out probably early next year. Um, in terms of, like, bigger projects, I um, don't have one coming up immediately, but there will be one definitely coming out either mid to late next year. So just that'll be like a keep your eyes peeled kind of situation, but I've definitely released some singles. I'm always releasing singles. So the next one um, will be with Dwayne DeRock. So that, keep your eyes open for that one coming out soon. Oh, and, you know, to be able to work with a legend like Jada Kiss, how does that feel? Like, isn't that just fantastic? I mean, that's surreal. I mean, and I got that opportunity through um, Dwayne. So that, that just, I'm like still like, I can't believe that that's, happening right now especially you know this is my first feature um with anybody that i i've i've sang on other people's projects before um but they weren't my songs so you know that those have been wonderful opportunities um you know a lot of dj projects that have been you know djs that are pretty popular but this is my first one with um somebody of jd kiss's caliber so that's it's an honor. I'm excited about it. Uh, the song is going to be like a, a dance, um, Cape Verdean um, style of song, which is fun. My first kind of vibe like that. So I'm excited. It's going to be it's going to be a dope song, and it's going to be a good one to dance to and snuggle up with your with your boo on the dance floor. So it'll be fun. Oh, Steph. And I, actually, it's funny thing is um, I had the opportunity to meet Jada Kiss and Unlocks, and they came up here, and we had did an uh, interview. And um, it was an event that was going on in Niagara Falls. They're so nice, real good guys. So I know you're going to really enjoy the opportunity to work with them. You know, they really support up and coming and uh, support it because, like I said, we're, we're all out here. We're all grinding. But it's years before I start to get really get into the industry, industry. And, you know, being able to interview them is a big honor. So it's just great. Congratulations on that. Um, one Thank more you. thing. You're welcome. One more thing, of course. I want everybody to follow you and support you. What is your social media and information so people can follow and support what you have going on? For sure. My my social media, I'm mostly on 
Instagram, I have a Facebook, um, and then I have Twitter. My Instagram and Twitter is Love Ebonique, and that's just spelled uh, L O V E E B O N I Q U E. That's my name. My Facebook is just Ebonique, my artist page, and um, what else? Those are my main ones. I'm, gonna, I'm creating a website that should be live in a few days, and that's going to be Ebonique's Music, or Ebonique Music. Um, so same Ebonique, E-B-O-N-I-Q-U-E, and then music.com. And, yeah, those are the main places that I'm, like, posting when I have upcoming performances. Um, it's always going to be on my IG, and then it's, once the site is live, it's going to be under the performances tab on my um, Definitely. So, of course, I'm going to move forward to wrap up the call and let everybody know exactly where this is going to be syndicated. Okay, I want you guys to make sure you check it out. We're going to have it syndicated on 95.5 FM, London. We're going to be playing her record right after this. Lipstick, of course, she's going to introduce that. And, of course, it's going to also be on a new YouTube channel. I am DJJ Erica, okay? And you guys can follow me that on YouTube so you guys can see the best of both worlds. And we also have a great visual feature on djtakeover.com that she will be featured in as well. So you'll be able to get into that, and all the links that she described and talked about will be in those posts and information so you can keep supporting it. I appreciate you coming to the show. I appreciate you, you know, just talking to us, let us know about you as an artist. And um, do you have any shout-outs before you introduce your single to everybody? I'd say shout out to Dwayne Duroc for coming out and helping me with the with everything with my music and this new single coming up. Uh, shout out to Matt Cash and the Flage um, for he's really my writer, my co-writer for all, almost all my projects. Um, shout out to you, thank you for having me on the show, and um, that's it. That's all I got for now. And so you're going to be listening to Lipstick, this is my latest single, and. Uh, Check it out. Makeup done, high heels on, blue dress on, diamond stun, fur coat on, lipstick.